Hello everybody. Hey, welcome to another video, Making Waves. Um, some of you are probably already kind of figuring out what this one's going to be based on the other ones. But I want to tell you, it's been such a joy to shoot every one of these videos. Uh, couldn't do it without Levi Wheatley and Ben King. Uh, let's all give them a hand for having the scriptures come to life. Um, I'm going to be reading in Luke chapter 8. Uh, there's a couple accounts of this story in the past in the Bible. But I'm going to be reading out of Luke. If you want to get ready for that, I'm going to read the story like I've done in all the other teachings. Um, this is a very uh, familiar story, is what I should say. Um, I'm actually going to teach it from the perspective of being in the boat. Um, we all have boats in life, and uh, the, the real question is not uh, what's in your boat, but who's in your boat. And uh, so before I start, I'd like to pray for you. Um, so if you'd bow your heads and, uh, Lord, Father, uh, you say to come to you, uh, you boldly. And, Father, I just pray right now for just a boldness to rise up in the people. Lord, as, the, as this teaching goes forth, Lord, there'll be great discussion questions. Uh, maybe some of the kids that are a part of it, Lord, will have great questions and comments. Uh, and, Father, I thank you uh, for your scriptures, the stories that are told that happened in the Bible that are true. Uh, and Lord, may this uh, story minister to a need. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, now, uh, obviously, out here in the, in the sea, the waves kind of move me around a little bit, so I'll be moving just ever so slightly to get back into your focus. But uh, uh, if you have your Bibles, like I mentioned, Luke chapter 8, uh, the title is uh, Jesus Calms a Storm. So I want to read to, it, uh, to you this passage, starting in verse 22. Now it happened on a certain day. Now what's important when you read that in the scriptures, a certain day means it happened. So it happened on a certain day um, that, that he got into a boat with his disciples. And as he said to them, let's cross to the other side uh, of the lake. And they launched out. But as they sailed, uh, Jesus fell asleep. Now, Jesus had been ministering, um, and Jesus decided to take a nap. These guys, most of them were fishermen, so they, he was comfortable with them leading the boat. Um, so Jesus is asleep in the back of the boat, and, uh, and a windstorm came down on the lake. And these windstorms would come from anywhere, and they would happen right away. Uh, and they were filled, the boat was filling with water, and they were in jeopardy. Um, and they came to him and woke him, saying, Master, we're perishing. Uh, and that word perishing means they were fearful unto death. So it was a very critical spot in their moment uh, in, the, in the story. And, uh, but he said to them, uh, so he arose, he rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. Uh, but he said to them, where's your faith? Um, you know, sometimes I've asked myself that, where's my faith? Um, and they were afraid and marveled and said to one another, who can this be? For he commands even the winds and the water to obey him. Then they sailed to the country of Gadarenes, which is the opposite of Galilee. And when he stepped onto the land on the other side, there he met a certain man from the city who had demons in him for a long time. And he wore no clothes, nor did he live in a home, but he lived out in the tombs. Now, I read that part because that's kind of the end of this story, is what happened in Gadarenes. But um, just to kind of paraphrase, so Jesus went to sleep. It was a violent storm had come in. Um, they were in danger, and the reason they were in danger, it was a force they couldn't control. And uh, the storm frightened them to the fear of death. Now, I love to fish. And uh, I actually have a little 16-foot boat up in Michigan. And I was out doing some fall steelhead fishing in the inner lake of Pier Marquette that leads to Lake Michigan. And it was windy, but it, when I'm in the inland lake, I could fish it. But uh, Lake Michigan had some big rollers. And my brother-in-law, who lives just north of Ludington, called me and said, hey, uh, can you get outside the pier heads and come down in front of my house? There's something floating out in the water that I need to see what it is. Uh, and I said, well, I'll try. And I'm telling you this. When I got my boat around the point of that break wall, and, and I hit the first wave, the wind blew my boat just like that, and I landed. And I turned right around, and uh, I wasn't going. 
and it was almost a fearful moment for me and somewhat can sense how they felt. But Jesus is, is sleeping, it's storming, they're spraying water, uh, waves are beating against the boat. The men, there's actually literally the Bible in terms they were screaming and Jesus is asleep. Now, I think maybe, just maybe, uh, use your holy imagination with me that um, maybe Jesus wasn't really asleep. Uh, maybe he was just listening and observing. Um, and maybe he was hoping that one of them would say, you know, if Jesus isn't worried, why should we be worried? That would be faith. By the way, um, Jesus isn't ever worried about your situation. Um, and so if he's not, why should you? And I know that sometimes we're in very difficult times. Um, or maybe he's, he's just waiting for one of them to ask for help. Um, and, and that is like, he would be saying, you know, I taught them how to pray. They asked how to pray. And uh, so, so maybe he would be thinking about, maybe they learned something in prayer. Or maybe he was just thinking about with one eye open, uh, maybe this is a faith lesson for them, that waiting on the Lord and testing the disciples to develop their faith. But in all that, the disciples didn't care that he was sleeping peaceful. They woke him up. And uh, as I started the message, I mentioned this. It's not what's in your boat, but who's in your boat that matters in your life. And so I just take some of the key points here uh, to kind of reemphasize them. Uh, Jesus is in our boat. When you become a believer, he's always in your boat. And in our life journey as Christians, uh, we need to remember that Jesus is in the boat. Sometimes we forget that Jesus is in the boat. And I think the disciples had just a moment where they forgot that he was in the boat because they, they lingered too long. And the disciples uh, were being obedient to Jesus um, when they encountered the storm, which takes me to my second point. Even though you're obedient to Jesus, because they, Jesus, they followed him, right? Uh, storms are inevitable. John 16 says, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you're going to have trouble, tribulations. Be of good cheer for I've overcome the world. So it's inevitable that even in your obedience to Jesus and following him, storms will come. And you have to realize that they will come and they are inevitable. However, if you have Jesus in your boat, you can have peace in the storm. That's just a spot to say amen, right? Right in your life group, just say amen. Even in the storm, we can have peace. And here's the storms people face. Uh, let, let's really think about this. This was a physical storm, but we face storms in relationships, mostly family. We face storms financially. Some of you are in health storms, um, emotional storms. And listen, in those storms, there is no peace. But I'm here to tell you that wherever storm you're in, uh, Jesus is in your boat. And the next step activates him in your boat so that you can experience peace. So when, when, when in the storm, again, some of those that I mentioned, um, you go to Jesus. We normally say things like this when trouble comes. Where were you, God? Would have been nice if you'd have been, been here um, and don't know what you were doing when this storm came. You could have prevented the storm, but um, just because a storm comes doesn't mean that God doesn't care about you. So prayer, prayer uh, is the key. So it's what the disciples did uh, in the storm. They went to Jesus, which was their wisdom, that Jesus was there. And uh, 1 Peter 5, 7 says, cast all your cares upon me, for I care for you. And uh, so let me, let me give this analogy about wh why this point is so important. There was some times when my, my children uh, at home were scared at night for some reason. And in the morning, they told me uh, that how scared they were and that they couldn't sleep. And here's what I said to them. Why didn't you wake me up? Which means this, that I was in their home with them, but they never came and woke me up. Therefore, they never received the blessing of me being there because they never came to me. It's the same thing with Jesus. We try to do so many things on our own that we miss the blessing of him coming. And so, so, don't ever have Jesus say this. Why didn't you wake me up? Now, Jesus isn't asleep in your life. I believe me that. But, but um, he's always there ready for you. Um, sometimes we feel like he's sleeping. Uh, the next one is, is after the storm, if you get through the storm, after the miracle happens in your life, uh, you receive a new revelation of who Jesus is. And here, here's what I mean by this. 
after he calmed the storm, the disciples realized he had authority that they weren't aware of. And there is storms that may come to your life. And you, there's uh, Jesus wants to reveal a power to you that you don't even know he has right now. And that'll broaden your worship and your adoration for him. And then when it says it was a calm, uh, it was dead silence. Okay, so you imagine this body of water raging, blowing. And then when Jesus stood up and calmed it, the Bible says that it was a calm. It, and it happened right now. And um, a dead silence. And how many know that uh, once a raging sea is done, Jesus can calm the storm, even in your own storms. He can take it. And you, you look back and say, I don't know how he did it, but it was calm from that day on. And then after Jesus calmed the storm, the biggest revelation they had of him was he was the Prince of Peace, the Lord of Lords. And so there is ways you can experience his peace. Um, Philippians 4 says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs. Thank him for all he's done. That thankfulness, by the way, is a very important part. Uh, when you live thankful to God for all he's done, that'll always prepare you uh, in prayer. That's really, I think it's the foundation of our desire to pray so that when we're in the storm, we're already prayed up. It's not a new thing for us. Uh, most times though, most prayer is done in the storm, which is just human nature. It's not wrong, but your prayer life developed, um, it will be a, a, a quicker place to go for help from the Lord. We usually, uh, by the way, start to focus and we worry um, on the problem and not God. But a prayer life has us always focus on him. Now, the blessings, here, here's what I'd like you to try to think about. Uh, try to go home. You should do this. Um, begin to make a blessing list. A blessing list. Um, you know, the waves here are too big today, but it's not keeping me out where I want. But um, uh, the storm's coming. And, uh, but uh, make a blessing list of the good things the Lord has done for you. And if you, see, listen, when you see your hand write out the blessings the Lord's done for you, change your whole perspective of when the storm does come, of how good he's been to you. And he'll just continue to write more blessings in your journal that he's done for you. Um, but storms will come, but they don't have to overcome you. Um, so so as, the, as, as I conclude this story, in the storms of life, um, I don't know where the storm originated from. I don't know. I know that Jesus uh, was, was saying, let's go to the other side. And I believe that um, there's, you, can, you can speculate on this. Not, not speculate, you can use your holy imagination. I believe that the storm was a preparation to grow the faith of the, of the disciples for the next step of ministry, um, which was the deliverance of the demon-possessed man um, in uh, Gadarenes. Now, that, that, or Satan knew Jesus was heading there to deliver that man through a timely experience with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And the storm might have come to thwart or to hinder them from getting to that man. But let me tell you, it doesn't matter uh, what comes your way. Nothing can keep you from the love of God. And so through this story, um, the storm that came didn't bother Jesus. The disciples went to him in prayer. Who's in your boat and brought peace beyond understanding. And uh, let me just pray for you as we, uh, as I close this teaching. And just remember that sometimes when storms come, it, it's a sign that the next assignment is a great miracle God wants to use you for in delivering somebody from the dominion of darkness in Jesus name. Amen. So let us pray. Father, we thank you for this scripture. It was a certain day. And Jesus, you didn't tell the disciples the storm was coming. Uh, Jesus, you slept through it. And Lord, I pray that you give uh, each of us that peace beyond understanding, that you give us a thankful heart, that when that storm comes, we can sleep in the storm. Because Jesus, we know that storms don't worry you. For you're, you're with us the whole time. 
And, and Lord, I pray that each person take a greater step of faith in waking you up sooner, which is praying to you that their prayer life would grow and grow and grow, that when the storms come, it would just be a natural progression of their prayer life and not, oh, I got to find my face switch and turn the face switch on, but it'd be a natural progression to come to you for all things. And Lord, every storm, I pray for a new revelation that people have of you. And Lord, I thank you for all you've done in my life, the storms you've gotten me through. And I look back and I thank you, Jesus, that you have power I never realized. And I thank you for more revealed power in my life and the people's lives that are watching, that you'd bless them. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I thought I'd shoot a little trailer for you to give you a little more, uh, you know, bring you into the story more because we didn't really have a lot of rock. But listen, we, the, the boat was full, disciples, Jesus is sleeping in the back. And from nowhere, nowhere, it started storming and splashing and, and I, the wind and the waves and, and everything coming on us. And, and, and then I look back and Jesus has got water all over him. And, and uh, we, were, we were yelling and screaming, we were gonna perish. And, and, then, and then one more wave came and we were taking water in. and. and and then all of a sudden, Peter said, I'm going to wake up Jesus. And he woke up Jesus. Jesus got up and said, where's your faith? And Jesus calmed the storm. And everything was calm in that moment. And, and here's, here's, here's why I did this. To get you to laugh, but also this. Sometimes the storms in your life will get on you. They will get on you. But the minute Jesus comes in, the storm will never affect your life again. And it won't be long. You will all be back to where you were before the storm. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope that blessed you. Have a great day.